Hello everybody, Kermit the Frog here, and welcome to Awesome Comics, your one-stop shop for everything comic book entertainment! Yay! And now, here's your host, Walter Banasiak! Yay! Hey everyone, how's it going? <laughs> wow, thanks Kermit, really appreciate that. So anyway, um, <laughs> welcome to Awesome Comics, this is your one-stop shop for everything comic book entertainment, and I am indeed your host, Walter Banasiak. Today we're talking about our favorite live action Marvel movies and we have a great panel for today. You know him, you love him. <laughs> Who's this guy? Hello, Brian Porter. And? I'm Heather Roos. And? Ayanna Wade. All right, everybody. We're gonna be talking about our favorite Marvel movies. Last week we were talking about our favorite DC movies. I know you love that because you <laughs> agreed with everything you said. And now you're gonna agree with everything we have to say about our favorite Marvel movies. Uh, we're gonna have to get moving on this really quick. So, Heather, what is your favorite Marvel live action movie? Well, my favorite live action Marvel movie is The Avengers, the first one. Um, part of it is just for the, exper the cinematic experience. Like when it first came out, sitting in that theater and feeling like I f it finally paid off seeing all these other movies, the way everything interconnected. It was such an epic event. It almost felt like a comic book event, like when Marvel or DC has an event. So I just think that part of the reason it's so amazing is because of the cinematic ex experience when it first came out. Um, I really love that since the characters were already developed in their first movies, we really had a chance to focus on their interactions and relationships since their characters had already been established. Um, it was really more about other characters as well, like Coulson, who added a lot to the mix. Okay. Um, Coulson. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Man, I know. Coulson One of my though. favorite moments in that movie is Coulson's death scene. Like, oh, it just spoiler. tears me apart every Coulson. time. It's so great. It's okay because he's alive. <laughs> I was pretty devastated when that happened. I, I was too. It tears me apart every yeah. time. Everybody every was. time. Yeah. I, I mean, and it was so perfect because they didn't get along until that moment, and it was exactly what they needed. Right. So I think the movie itself was very well crafted. It felt like a comic without being overly gimmicky. Um, the characters, like I said, were very well established, already um, kind of grounded. Uh, the acting is great. Mm -hmm. Loki. Uh, Loki. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's another reason Loki's why I love it. one of my he favorite villains. Arguably. Don't care. Sorry. Yeah. Love it. Then I'm not sorry. No, I agree. Loki, especially yeah. girls. I love yes. Loki. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. He's one of the best villains in the MCU. Arguably the best. Probably the best. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think MCU. it's really that close with anyone else. Really. Yeah. The Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. Yeah. Well, apparently still in the universe, but anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, the Avengers was the culmination of, you know, from Iron Man from 2008 all the mm -hmm. way up to 2012. They built those individual stories and it was a landmark movie. I mean, the Avengers finally bringing together some of our favorite characters from comic books. And even since then, I mean, DC's trying to do something like that now, kind of, but doing it backwards. Mm -hmm. And Marvel, mm -hmm. yeah, right. But Marvel has really stepped outside the box, that kind of thing, even though it was a no-brainer to comic book fans for years. Like, why don't you just cross over all these yeah, movies? Right. Why don't you do this? Right. And they finally listened. They got their own studio together, eventually bought out by Disney. But Disney has kept up that banner really well, I think. And The yeah. Avengers is the culmination of all that. I don't think it's a perfect movie. No, I think it isn't. Right. But part of the, part of the reason it's great as well is it lived up to the hype. It did. Like we were all hyped yeah. for the movie, mm -hmm. and, totally and it delivered. didn't let us down. Yeah, totally delivered. You Absolutely. Know. That uh, scene where they're coming together, that that panning shot where it comes around, all of them, everybody's getting ready. Oh for yeah, the, the hero the, shot. Yeah, yes. the hero shot like that was so good. Awesome. So that was good. awesome. The only thing that is better for me for that type of shot is in. Age of Age Ultron, Ultron yeah. when they all like jump out and they have that slow mo the and then they go back in. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. not even Vision, the one in the beginning when they're oh, in the, yeah. the, that the one's forest. All, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they all freeze frame, they're all jumping yeah. and then they come through. Like I freaking love that. It's yeah. amazing. But they got two Avengers. Age of Ultron, that's all I'm oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> but Avengers was fantastic. It was definitely everything we needed it to be, we wanted it to be. And uh cinematically, I guess you could say there's a few things, but I mean Right. Who gives it's, a shit? it's unprecedented yeah. at right. that point. You know, honestly, I thought until I saw the first trailer, I, well, actually, up until Captain America, I, I thought it was. I thought the Avengers were gonna suck. I was like, <laughs> I was like, there's no way they could put all this together and like have it be good. It's gonna be great. Maybe the sequel will be awesome. But this one is just like it's too much of a, a risk right now. Like it's going to. It's not gonna. It'll do well, you know, in the box office. But the movie itself is probably not gonna be good. Thank God I was wrong because. Right. Yeah. I love the Avengers. I mean, like, you know, it didn't have to be super complex, super deep. It's fun. It was Joss Whedon. He's used yeah. to using, or always using a lot of different types of characters, mm -hmm. right. bringing them all together in a team 
variety. I heard so. you hate Firefly. Is that true? I <laughs> I will hurt you. Do not he loves Firefly. I love oh, Firefly. Oh, I thought we were gonna have to Wait, have. I just died a little bit. It's battle. like his favorite thing. <laughs> What is wrong? Right. With you? I was like, we need to have an episode about this. Let's talk. No, oh, no, he loves fire. Oh, I'm right. kidding. He oh, loves fire. Did you guys see the new episode? April. <laughs> Why do you have to go there? Now I'm gonna cry again. Right. Uh, Almost as much as I cried when Agent Coulson died. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ayana, overall, <laughs> Avengers. What were, was your base opinion of it? Avengers was my favorite movie at the time when it came out. Uh, I I don't ha, there's there's so many others that are still as good but I watched it in theaters I want to say five times. Nice. Yeah, I loved it. I kept going to matinees because I was you know getting broke after how many times I was going <laughs> to the movies to see it. I loved it. it the rewatchability on that movie is just I I'll go see it for the jokes. They're so funny. Mm -hmm. Still funny. I love it. Avengers is fantastic. But Porter, you have a different movie that's your favorite Marvel movie. What would that be, sure? That is Deadpool. 2016 Deadpool. Holy crap. It was amazing. Just it was amazing. Out. And it was made by Fox. What? How did that happen? <laughs> what? Anyway. Well done. They didn't um, mess it up. Well done, I know, Fox. right? Cheers to this you. movie, 10 years in the making, right. a decade of just, you know, pre-production hell. Ryan Reynolds has been wanting to do this for 11 years, he said. And it just was perfect. It was such a good movie. And I know people are like, oh, it wasn't that great of a movie. It was weird. It was all over the place, this and that. He was like stabbing people. And it's like, well, that's Deadpool. Right. If you don't like this movie, you don't like Deadpool. It's rated R. By the way, parents, <laughs> if you're bringing a kid to a rated R movie, don't complain about how violent and sexual it was after you brought them to a rated R movie. That's yeah, there's the this R little, yeah, this little yeah, MPAA. Yes. It's got yeah. a little description mm -hmm. box. Yeah. It you says might what do it your is. Homework when it, a little bit when on it that. says graphic nudity and strong violence, you kind of got a clue what's yeah, going on. Yeah, we got on. a right. full frontal fight scene in that. Yeah. yeah. Usually we don't get yeah, that so much weird. like yeah. balance. <laughs> there were some shadowy of, shadowy nuts yeah. and it was interesting. <laughs> I, I mean, usually in superhero movie or like movies in general, we get a lot of female like nudity. This one, we got both. We saw Ryan Reynolds Oh asked yes. like three times. Yes. I know yes. my girlfriend and every other woman in the theater was just like, okay. Oh. Yep. And I'm like, at least it's muscular. I don't know. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. okay. But anyway, anyway. It, it was amazing. <laughs> Not his ass. The movie. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. I loved that movie. It captured Deadpool to a T. Yeah. And it didn't really take off of any particular storyline. And it kind of played with his origin a tad because of whatever reason. But I think... It was a very good representation of Deadpool, and it was perfect. It the fact that it was rated R was a huge milestone. There for, was debate about that yeah. for a while, if it was going to be PG-13 or yeah. R. Yeah, and the, the fans and any, everybody attached to the project you know, from the film side was like, no, to be the movie that we needed to be, it has to be rated R. And the studio didn't want to take that uh, you know, risk and whatever. So they dropped the budget down a little bit. Everybody kind of like took a little bit of a pay cut and this and that. Like, okay, we're going to drop the budget so we don't lose as much if it flops. Definitely didn't flop. No, it, it was phenomenal. It, it like beat Star Wars at, in some country. I can't remember. Yeah, Russia, uh, or Russia, yeah. Yeah, it beat Star Wars. Yeah. Deadpool beat Star Wars. It is the <laughs> highest grossing rated R film of all time. Yeah. First what? it was the you know comic book. Now it's rated R and it has the strongest rated R opening for February. It, it was breaking le records left and right. They took the time to do it right. Absolutely. I totally agree. They took the time to what? Do it right. Oh, okay. <laughs> to do it right. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> nice. Uh, no, I think, yeah, I absolutely agree. And just how hilarious it was and everything that they put into the movie was perfect. There was, you can't compare it to any one comic because they encompass Deadpool as a whole. And there was a bunch of stuff thrown in there that was specifically for the fans. They did this movie for the fans. And this is what I've been saying for years. When you do a comic book movie, when you do a comic book movie, you do it for the fans, and then everybody else will enjoy it. This is a direct, totally 100% true, it backs me up. Because screw you, Snyder. Um, <laughs> this is how you do a movie. And <laughs> We're just always talking about this. And it Sorry. worked so well. They did this for the fans, and everybody loved it. Well, it was very tongue-in-cheek, too. They were able to make fun of themselves as they were doing it. They were able to reference some other Ryan Reynolds stuff. They were able to reference... And that's, um, that's so the Deadpool. It's and, so the meta. It's and they so can break the fourth, fourth wall, but they did it... They could have done it more, honestly. Like, Deadpool, like, you kind of have, like, range to, like, 
go oh, yeah. even more with it. And, and they it, were it, relatively reserved, like they did yeah. it, but they and they took out his back. his split personality. And current continuity mm-hmm. kind of doesn't really have those split personality, yeah. but for years he did. And I think that it was a good choice, even though I would have liked to have seen it. But going forward, you can totally put that you in at any time, especially with his love interest. He they could kill her off at some point, and then all of a sudden he. That's it. He snaps. Now he's got the alter ego, and they could totally put it in there. He could break far, fourth wall a little bit more. And then you've got the addition of Cable when they said at the uh, after credit scene. Like, there's so much that we can do with Deadpool, and I think everybody's on board with it. I, I didn't meet one person that did not like Deadpool. Like, it was We're about amazing. about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we will. I mean, I enjoyed it, but it was by far not my favorite yeah. superhero movie. However... I don't like the Deadpool comics. Like, I I shouldn't say I don't like them, but I knew going in, Deadpool is not my favorite X-Men. So I knew that I was it was not going to be my favorite. So I don't hate it, but I didn't love it. Mm. Did you like the mouth stone shot one? (laughs) (laughs) Let's talk about that for just a quick second because we've got to move on. Okay. What did you think of X-Men Origins Wolverine interpretation of Deadpool? Oh god, that movie was terrible. It wasn't Deadpool. It was not Deadpool. How do you take the Merc with Deadpool? They called him the Deadpool. Right. But it's like, no, how do you take the Merc with a mouth? And then show Take his away freaking mouth. mouth shut. Like, yeah. it was awful. Killed Although, he did a very good Wade Wilson when he was before any of that. He was Wade Wilson. I think it worked. Even though he wasn't really Deadpool yet, he still had the Wade Wilson swagger. persona, swagger, swords, everything. I think it, that worked well, but the rest of the movie sucked ass, obviously. <laughs> we all know that. Let's move on. Okay, fine. <laughs> we'll move on to something real quick. Uh, my movie. Uh, one second. What I is it? I don't know if you can tell what it I don't is know because what your it's movie it's is. a it's a movie very personal. Are to you me. a net with eyes? Like, I don't know. Hold on. Maybe you recognize you the tune. <laughs> Where'd your eyes go? I still don't get it. Yeah, I'm talking about Spider-Man, but the first one, the Tobey Maguire first Spider-Man. Let me take this off. Probably can't hear you. The first, the first Spider-Man movie starring Tobey Maguire. The, the one that uh, started off the Sam, Ra- Sam Raimi trilogy. And a lot of people like that second movie a lot better than the first one, but I am a huge fan of the first one. I have a, I have a personal connection to this movie, okay? We went to see Spider-Man at uh, River Oaks Theater in Calumet City, <laughs> Illinois, and it was one of the first times I like just went to a movie by myself with a friend, and man, I still have so many warm, feelings and thoughts about that movie when I watch it, it all comes back to me. So it's hard to remove the nostalgia factor from it and just judge it as a movie. But I watched it last night and it's still a really solid origin story for Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire, not my favorite Peter Parker. I actually like Andrew Garfield better. Right, kill me, right? Okay. But, um, <laughs> but uh, Tobey Maguire is good in this movie. Uh, the whole direction was great. It's a comic book movie. I mean, it splashes off the screen. It's great. It's a lot of fun. It uh, It isn't all gloom and doom like other movies that we talked about before. Um, I love James Franco as Harry Osborn. I may be like kind of in the minority like that as, as the movies went along. Okay with it. I'm okay with it. I was not okay with it. His I, teen I, angst was I off loved, the charts. I loved him. I love James Franco and like it's, I've enjoyed following his career. Like it's so much fun to see what he's gone from, from you know, his persona kind of changing to doing more comedies, to doing more serious stuff. And now he's doing, we're watching 11, 22, uh, 63, yeah. which is a great show and he's great in that show. I've really enjoyed following his career and started here. He looks so young in that movie because I've been watching that show. Like he looks so young in Spider-Man. It's kind of, it's kind of freaky. It was it 13 years um, ago, right? It was a long 2002. Yeah. Oh, 2002. Wow. Yeah. It was a long mm-hmm. time ago. Um, Harry and, and Peter's relationship is solid stuff, and it still pisses me off to this day that we didn't get a proper finish for that in Spider Man 3. There was no big confrontation. That little thing at the beginning of the movie was not what, you know, two and a half movies building up to. That was not what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to build this ultimate confrontation between Harry and Peter, and it just never really happened. Um, Tom McGuire is sympathetic. I, like I said, I mean, he's not as. He's not as good of a fit as Peter Parker as I think Andrew Garfield is, but he's sympathetic enough where I like him as, as Peter Parker. Willem Dafoe is so over the top as, as Green Goblin. <laughs> I'm fine with it. I oh thought it worked well. Yeah, I'm fine I with really it. Liked I really like Willem too. Dafoe. So I, really I, I thought awesome. he was great. He was great Dafoe. as Harry I mean, You knew what you were getting. Get what you want for, or, uh, yeah, Norman Osborn. Right. Like, it was great. You know, get what you want, Broomer Fast. Like, it was, I, yeah. I loved him as Even Norman Even the costume. Osborn. People take craps on that costume all the time. I know it's not like the comics. I would prefer to see a more right. comic accurate representation of the Green Goblin costume too, but that costume was fine. Like I didn't have a big problem with it. I thought it fit in the movie fine. It was, it was okay. Uh, Uncle Ben was great. I, I love Uncle Ben in this. Uh, I think that actor just passed away a couple years ago too, mm-hmm. or a year ago. 
Um, but he was he was great in the movie, really uh, empathetic, really cared about him and Peter's relationship for the amount of movie that he was in. Um, I still would prefer prefer web shooters. I don't yeah. I don't like the organic <laughs> web shooter go. thing. Yeah, go, <laughs> go, that go, was go, funny go. though. Fly. I love that too. So. <laughs> yeah, that was great stuff. Um, some of the CG is like PS2 bad, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and this yeah. doesn't hold up. Yes. Some of it does, but some of it there's the part where he has like his wrestler outfit on, he's craw craw crawling up the wall, mm -hmm. and it looks straight like a cutscene from a PlayStation 2 game. <laughs> still really bad. Uh, it's a great coming of age story. I thought the love story with Peter and MJ was handled pretty well. I thought that also kind of teetered off as the movies went along, but in the first movie it was solid. Mm. It has sincere, quiet moments, and it makes the movie really well rounded. Calm down. <laughs> uh, this is Dr. Pepper scene in this, and anytime Dr. Pepper's yes. in any movie, I love it, so yes. <laughs> um, Uncle Ben and Peter's car scene, like I said before, is great. And how could you not love the wrestling stuff in this? The Macho Man was in. That's always <laughs> oh, <he's> ready. <laughs> Come on, how could you not love that? What about Aunt May? Aunt May was the best. Aunt May was cool. You know, I didn't really love Aunt May. Aunt, and this Aunt May fun. was so much better than Sally, Sally Field. Fields. <laughs> I do not like Sally Field, and she wasn't terrible. She was better than I expected in Amazing Spider-Man. Mm. I still do not like her, and she does not feel like Aunt May, but this Aunt May felt like Aunt May. Like, she sure. had the look, she had the feel, the voice. Just she, was, she seemed like the perfect iteration of Aunt May. And now we've got Marissa Tomei as... Aunt May going into the new Marvel Sony uh, we'll see how that collaboration, works so right. that's going to be interesting. How yeah. are you going to have a hot Aunt May? Like <laughs> Aunt May was always hot. Aunt Come May's on, hot. guys. Come Aunt on. May's hot. What are we going to do? J.K. Simmons. There I know. we go. Oh my gosh. I love yeah, J. K. The, probably the perfect casting, the most perfect casting yes. of any comic book character oh ever gosh. was J.K. Simmons, J. Joan Jameson. Mm -hmm. It was it fantastic. Was perfect. Yeah. And now he so even good. voiced. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson in Ultimate Spider-Man on you know, Disney XD. Like he's mm -hmm. he's he is J. Jonah Jameson. And now he is he's a menace. <laughs> <laughs> now he is Commissioner Gordon. So yeah, that's we'll see be how that goes. Yeah, yeah, he's a good actor. J.K. Simmons is a good actor. I'm sure he'll pull it off fine. Award-winning Just... actor. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oscar-winning actor. Um, yeah. Other like quick notes I had. Bruce Campbell's cameo is great. <laughs> yeah. Like he's always great in those movies. Um, the montage of Spider-Man saving people like for the first time. It's comic booky like it's just it's a comic book on the screen it's great i love seeing that kind of stuff uh, this movie just makes me feel good all right it makes me feel good to watch this movie so don't judge me i like it better than spider-man 2 i'm not a gigantic doc ock fan but i am a huge spider-man fan and this one just is so close to my heart it's my favorite is it the best no. i would say yes except for what we're going no. to now um <laughs> this is my gift my curse who am i i'm spider-man Go on, follow that. Uh, okay. Ah. <laughs> she got you. <laughs> totally got you. Okay, but seriously though. <laughs> Uh, Daredevil, my right? favorite is Daredevil. 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 That's what I thought. Um, oh my God, Ben Affleck in that Daredevil. is just the best. <laughs> but seriously, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> is my favorite. It has the most amazing soundtrack of any movie ever. Disprove that. Empire, Go ahead. Empire Records? I can't. No, well, I, you know what? That was, okay. <laughs> Meh. All right. But still, Guardians of the Galaxy, one of the most amazing soundtracks. Um, just a great storyline. It brought out really obscure characters that, like, you know, we're, we're kind of getting tired of seeing Batman and Superman, and it almost Captain America might be getting to that point. Now we're all, like... Yeah, we know who the Iron staples, Man is. We yeah. know who we we know who all these staples are. We keep seeing Spider Man's origin being told. We we get it now. Like stop we, we killing Uncle Ben so much. <laughs> yeah. And Uncle, Uncle Ben dies. Uncle ben. We got that. Um, unless uh, you know we get some Spider Gwen going <laughs> oh, up. Uh, I'm on board. Let's do it. I'm available. Uh, it's so <laughs> you gotta play Barbara Gordon. Huh? Um, I'll do both. <laughs> My God, this crossover. Uh, yeah, it's. It's these characters that no one really knows. They're really obscure. Mm -hmm. They're characters that we don't know if we should care about. They're characters we don't know if we should be rooting for. Are they good guys? Are they bad guys? And this movie sort of just makes you love them. And they're, they're rough around the edges. You know, they they literally go, flick off the audience. You know, it's a it's a big old middle finger at one point. It, mm -hmm. You know, and the fans eat it up. It's All great. Right. Yeah, it blends action, like heavy character, really heavy character moments, like yeah. good oh, absolutely. character yeah. moments. Rocket. 
has oh, yeah. some yeah. really when funny one-liners, raccoon. and then he's not a raccoon. Yeah. He's, he's, what's, what's a raccoon? Rocket raccoon. <laughs> what's a raccoon? He's Rocket, raccoon. Rocket the not that's raccoon. His name, yeah. But okay. yes, <laughs> they have some heavy moments followed by some one-liners, which is great. Even the like romance scene that I love her. I love Kamora's <laughs> line about. Uh, his his hips. Pelvic sorcery. Yeah. 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 Pelvic sorcery. Yeah. Like, whoa, what are you, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> this also intros Thanos formally. I mean, mm-hmm. we saw him at the end of Avengers, but this right. is like his formal, he's in the movie as a side character. So what do we think of Josh Brolin as Thanos? Um, we don't get him that much. So. We don't get him that fine. much, but he's in yeah. it. But he's going to so be the biggest bad in the Marvel Universe in Infinity War. I think so he's being that full body <laughs> shot. <laughs> That full body shot, and then him, you know, boy, he says it with the bass in his voice. I think he looks great. He sounds great. I'm excited. Let's Thanos it up. Let's 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 go. Infinity yeah. Wars. I'm excited. I love yeah. Lee Pace nice. too. Lee Pace is a sort of random like actor that I don't know if anyone watches Pushing Daisies or <laughs> Wonderfalls back when his career was starting. But I'm a Lee Pace fan, so when I found out he was going to be a Cree in this, I was pretty excited. Yeah, as it should he, be. He was great. I loved the villain. Everything about the movie was. It was kind of a weird. Was... I I actually didn't super love the like bathing scene. That was like the, the his... one part of the movie that I could have really kind of done without. Yeah. But the little ritual. Yeah. Like well, the yeah. same thing at the beginning of Mad Max. Yeah. Same, like throw some. Powder right with them. the powder. Yeah. 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 It was similar. I could have done without it. We get it. We get you. You're in power. Yeah. 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 Right. We get it. Mm-hmm. I, I thought the movie was great. The Ravagers. You know, yeah. it was mm-hmm. Peter Quill. Peter Quill's opening scene was awesome. <gasps> yes. It well, was. they have the opening scene, which you know, thanks Disney for making me cry yet again and killing off a parent in the first five minutes. You know, <laughs> like was, you yeah. can always count so on that. Intense. And That's, then the yeah. opening of the title drop was phenomenal. It was. Yeah. It totally was. Again, with the soundtrack. That yeah. soundtrack is my favorite part of the movie. It makes the movie. Without it, it would still be really good, but it wouldn't be anywhere near the level Especially of Especially with how confused everybody was when they were running the the theatrical trailers and the TV spots and all that stuff, and they had all these old songs, and it's like, mm-hmm. why are you care, doing yeah. this? And then you see the movie, it's like, I totally get it. It's amazing. Yeah. And I need yeah. volume two now. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. I'm so I cannot volume wait for two. volume two. Yeah. Stallone's in that. Stallone is in volume two. That's weird. Little Rocky, you know what I mean? Oh, God. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll get Howard the Duck in this movie too, which is awesome. That, he voiced teased, by Seth Green, right. I thought it was fantastic. A little tease of How, Howard right. the Duck. Um, the We Are Groot scene. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Oh my goodness. So many tears. Yeah, I, don't think I anybody went to go see it with eyes. a couple of my guy friends, and uh. the entire time, anytime Groot was on the screen, I know it's really hard to tell who my character, uh, favorite character was in the movie, but it, it was Groot. Yeah. No, shocking. <laughs> and I remember seeing that and being like, yes, group, yes, group. And then when that scene came up, I know they both just slow turned uh, like, oh, God, she's going to lose it. And so I was sad. lost it, mm-hmm. lost it. So it's sad. beautiful. Uh, it is. With uh, Rocket just holding a twig at the end, he's yeah. just, it's, you totally I, felt for these mm-hmm. characters. I want to talk, absolutely. I want to talk a little bit about that because I think the only small flaw, I still give the movie 10 out of 10 anyway, but <laughs> the smallest flaw is that I wish they would have left group dead at least until the next movie. You know what I mean? I think kind of cheapened his sacrifice to have, oh, he's back, he's a stick, he's little But he's dancing. baby Groot. Uh, and we got still, baby Groot. Isn't he still Groot, though? Yeah, but now we have baby Groot now. <laughs> we would have got him in the sequel. I right. couldn't have waited till the it sequel. Been. We have baby Groot now. It's still great. It's just like, I, I think it would have been more effective. If they I just would have waited. Just wait they, one I, more, I think they wanted the to, the fir- I think they wanted movie. to keep it ending on a really happy note. They wanted it to really- It still would have been happy. But Groot would be dead, and we would have thought he was dead. That's not happy. We got a little baby Groot, so we got the cute factor, mm-hmm. and then you got the fact that you know he's not dead. And mm-hmm. Where do you go from here? Like, is he going to grow? Like, I mean, we've got him in a plant. You could see him sprout a little bit. I think it's. it's I think it worked really yeah. well. I it's also fine. really like Chris Pratt as Peter Quill. Yes. I've been a fan of Chris Pratt from Parks and Rec, and I'm yes. all about him, all in his Chris Pratt ness. And I like him at his Andy Dwyer, but I will take him at his Star Lord as well. Yes. Let's talk about Drax really quick. Yeah, because Dave Batista. Dave a boy. Batista. Oh my Dave Batista said when he got the call and found out he was cast as Drax, he one immediately started crying because <laughs> of how excited he was. Guy. And then <laughs> two, he went out and took acting classes because he wanted to nail the role. And I think mm-hmm. that is awesome. That shows dedication yeah. for someone who's not necessarily considered an actor per se, right away, right. but then he comes out, he nails it. I love Drax as a character. His makeup 
was amazing yes. and all that stuff. I think he did super well and he was a really big highlight. No character was overshadowed by any other character. I think all the characters were showcased equally and all had their equal moments and I think it worked well. Like, totally mm -hmm. agree, totally agree. Um, what's your favorite Marvel movie? If you haven't already put it in the comments below, <laughs> please. I'm sure Winter Soldier is on there. I'm sure, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of other movies that we we missed out on next to. I'm sure you guys love that. I like it oh. too. I know Ghost Riders. On <laughs> <laughs> well, you already talked about Daredevil. I mean, <laughs> so good. It's so good. Uh, Spider-Man. Fan 4 stick? Fan 4 stick. Come on. <laughs> Spider-Man 3? Oh, no, yeah. I Fantastic know you guys love those four. movies. I want you to put those in the comments. <laughs> I want to up like your comment and I want to make it sure it's at the top of the top comments. So please do that. All right. Fantastic Four, sure. Yeah, Fantastic Four stick is a great movie. Hey everybody, it's Porter here at 10th Planet Comics in Cherville. Batman Europa, definitely a must read. I want all the things. DC Comics Rebirth, another reboot, a soft reboot as they say. We shall see DC, we shall see. With me I've got Jim and I'm gonna ask him a couple questions about his favorite Marvel live action. Well, my favorite Marvel live action film absolutely has to be the first Blade movie. Pretty much a pioneer trailblazing movie for the serious tone uh, that many modern day comic book films take. You know, it definitely opened up doors. You know, a lot of people kind of give credit to Batman Begins, but it's definitely Blade. The big thing for me is the new Doctor Strange trailer. It looks awesome. What do you think of it? Oh, it blew me away. The, uh, the effects, the, the astral projection, uh, in the middle of the uh, trailer. I mean, come on, that was great. Uh, I, I like the fact that the costume is actually really close to being comic book accurate, which I didn't think they were gonna go in that direction with the you know, puffy blue blouse with the red cape with the high collar. I thought that was great. So I'm really, into, I'm really looking forward to that uh, as well as Civil War. The new title for the Marvel Sony joint venture for Spider-Man is called Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, any thoughts on the title for that? Depends on like what what they mean by that. Is it going to be homecoming from Civil War, or is it sort of a tip of the hat to the old uh, post Secret Wars uh, series story arc? From from what I can tell and from what I've read online, uh, the homecoming is uh, the the hidden meaning behind it is the fact that. Marvel, uh, even though Sony is still distributing it, Marvel has a lot more control over this particular Spider-Man movie than they ever have before with the other ones with, you know, done by Raimi or uh, who's the other guy, the Garfield movies. As long as the movie is good, I just want the movie to be good. And with Marvel back at the helm, basically, I'm pretty sure that it'll be okay. I'm a subscriber here. This is my current comic book shop. I love it. They take care of me. It's great. And they also have an awesome awesome deal every day on their trades take advantage of our 25 percent off all trades and rpg guides every day that's our customer appreciation sale that goes on indefinitely and don't forget to visit comicsexaminer.com for the latest action figure comic book and comic book related movie news well i'm pretty excited for dr strange i think the trailer looked awesome and i really can't wait to see it can't wait for november so uh this has been porter at 10th planet comics in Cherville, indiana back to us in the studio I need a shopping cart and money, lots of money. All right, everybody, uh, another quick new segment here. The next Marvel movie is Captain America Civil War. How excited are we from a level of like one to 10? I'm at like an 11. I was million. gonna say 11. It's uh, like a joke, 10. sorry. I'm at a 10 because I follow a scale. <laughs> <laughs> you follow the rules. He's within the lines. <laughs> Porter, are you really excited for it? Uh, it's, I'm at like a level 1,000. I'm at 9,000. 9,000. Over 9,000. Over 9,000. 9, 9, uh, I'm so excited. I cannot <laughs> wait for this movie. Me too, me too. What do you guys think of Spider Man's look? We got a little glimpse of him at the end of the last trailer. I love the new mask. You like I it? I do, I do. The way that it moves. 
so he can finally emote pretty well. I, I mm -hmm. loved it. I thought it looked great. I thought it looked really cool too. I mean, it is very classic Spider-Man. It yeah, is. Yeah, very classic. Yes. Steve Ditko style. I'm gonna see about uh, the mask. I was, I think, the only person that's a little hesitant about the mask. You, the eyes are like, you know, up here with the camera lenses. They're no, I look at, they look weren't at a that high. They are. They're pretty high. <laughs> but still, like, I think it looks good. With the, with the way that yeah. they come out, like, it could yeah. totally be some Stark tech where it's like kind totally. of you Stark know, tech. like Absolutely. how Iron Man sees his stuff. Totally be the same. Thing, right. especially since it is Civil War, we know he gets the Iron Spider Man suit mm -hmm. in right. the comics. We could totally have that, and, and it's I think a it Peter work. Parker, like with the camera lens type yeah. of thing. I like that, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I think it'll be it great. Cool. I'm looking forward I to it. I loved him taking the shield, yeah, I think oh, yes. great. great stuff. He's a menace, really good. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <He's> a menace, <laughs> menace. Yeah. Uh, I, I need a cigar. Wait. Yeah, yeah right. and a mustache. Right. You should bring it back. I, I do. You know what? Let's just scrap it. We need J.K. Simmons. Just bring J.K. Simmons back. Who cares? Really should. Um, uh, let's go into our picks of the week. We all have picks that tie into the movies that we were talking about. Heather, why don't you go ahead and start us off? Well, conveniently, I have Civil War. Civil War! Yeah! Um, there's not really a comic that directly correlates with the Avengers, mm -hmm. um, but I feel like the Iron Man and the Captain America that we see in the movie Avengers um, translates very well to um, the Civil War comic books. Um, so if you like those characters and the way that they interact, you should definitely check out Civil War, especially since the movie is coming out. You should read this anyway. Um, it's very well written. It's really interesting to see all the ways um, that the characters choose sides. If, even if you're not that familiar with the Marvel Universe, it's still uh, accessible. Characters are still kind of introduced so that you won't be lost. So if you're interested at all, uh, in the Avengers or reading this before Civil War, you definitely should. It's a great comic. It's fantastic. All right, Porter, what Deadpool comic did you bring? Uh, I got Deadpool vs. the Marvel Universe. This is actually the finale of Cable Deadpool. It collects issues 43 through 50. And this doesn't directly tie into my movie either, specifically because there is no movie. It's just that movie encompasses all of Deadpool. So you can flip to any page in any Deadpool book and you'll totally catch it. And but this this book is awesome. It's got a lot of stuff. It's got it's it's got a lot of crazy fights, zombies, symbiote, dinosaurs. It's amazing. You got Cap, uh, Fantastic Four. Everybody's in it. It's a fantastic finale to Cable and Deadpool. Definitely a great read. Yeah. Mine for Spider-Man, I picked Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 1. Uh, this collects a few of the first issues, and it is a lot of fun to read. I mean, this came out, I think, a couple years before the Spider-Man movie did, but uh, I always have fond memories of this book, too. I mean, this is a great read. It's a different look at Spider-Man, the, the first four way into the Ultimate Universe and stuff, so this is a lot of fun. A little bit of a different Peter Parker, but it's still a lot of fun to read, and it ties into the movie, I think. So, Anna, what is your pick? Obviously, go out and read Guardians of the Galaxy if you liked Guardians of the Galaxy, but I took a different path with it. I started getting these Groot comics because Groot is my favorite character, and he gets to battle a bunch of people as baby Groot in this, so obviously I'm sold and I'm in 100%. My favorite character in this is actually Mantron, who's a robot that doesn't have any friends and gets some friends. But it's, it's basically an intergalactic road trip of Rocket and Groot and trying to get to Earth and... That's what we're going to see next in the series, and I, I love these monthly issues. They're really cute. The illustrations are awesome, and come on, you get more baby group. Who doesn't want more baby group? Absolutely. I do. I want more baby group. <laughs> All right. Always. All right. Uh, Heather, where can we find you on the social medias? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Heather Roos or on Instagram at HRoos. Mr. Porter. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash awesome porter. Okay, Ayanna? I'm on Facebook as Ayanna Wade, or you can find me on Twitter as well. Okay, and that's an interesting handle you have on Twitter, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at awesome underscore Walter. Um, I'm going to be on Nostalgia Critic, I think, when this comes out. I'm going to be on there tomorrow as of this posting. That'll be on YouTube and everything. I'm going to be playing Zack Snyder. <laughs> I know you're looking forward to that. Okay, everybody, uh, until next I, week, <laughs> we're going to be covering season one of Supergirl. Uh, we're going to have a couple people on here to talk about uh, the whole season that hasn't been renewed yet So as of this recording. So hopefully by the time we get around to that, we can talk about it if it's been renewed or canceled. But uh, looking forward to talking about Supergirl next week. So for everybody here, I am Walter Bernasiak, and we will see you on the next page. <laughs>